Hello everyone and welcome back to the OTCM workshop. In this video, the fourth in the series, I'm going to be looking at the construction of the fluid yard for my new exhibition layout. Last video we looked at the laying of the track and then the subsequent wiring up of everything and we got to a stage where trains were able to run. In this video we're going to be looking at the fitment of the point motors, the wiring up of the point motors, the wiring up of the control panel and getting things to a stage at which the fiddle yard can be deemed as complete and ready for exhibition use. Given this is quite a large fiddle yard, I wanted to make sure we were going to have electric points. Um, I think trying to walk up and down changing the points would be a, a, a real pain in the backside. Uh, so I don't want to entertain that, so I've bought some uh, SEEP point motors. These are the PM2s, the uh, simple ones, which don't have any switches attached, um, literally just for changing the points. I'm going to use frog juicers for the uh, changing the polarity on the point Vs, um, just so that if you run through a, a, a fiddle yard road and you don't realise you've gone beyond the stopping point uh, on onto the V, you don't short the whole layout out, which is something I obviously want to avoid. So these seat motors, they're just um, screwed down onto the baseboard, nice and easy. Um, I've got one potential issue, which is at this end, where the hole for the point motor um, and the tie bar is uh, just here, right on the uh, framework. A bit of planning on my side that without realizing it was going to uh, conflict with the frame but not a lot we can do about it now i didn't want to move the point in the uh, in the way the layout is on top because uh, that would have ruined the flow of the fiddle yard um, so what i'm going to do is get a surface point point motor for that we'll get that fitted um, and, then, and then take things from there so i've cracked on and got a surface mounted point motor uh, this one's a gauge master one uh, just a solenoid type so it'll work in exactly the same way as all the others on the layout with the sleep ones underneath um, i've just got it mounted up next to the point that um, sits right over the uh, framework as you can see it's got a, a sort of captive loop on either side which hooks over the end of the tie bar um, not 100 percent satisfied with the way this is working um, i think the code 75 track is slightly too low for the uh, design of this i think it's designed more for Code 100 keeps jumping off, so I'm going to have to come up with a way of securing that in place. A little bit disappointed with that, um, but it should be easy enough to resolve. The other end, I've uh, just popped a 3 mil hole through the baseboard and the wiring loom off the point motor drops through there and link up with everything else. And overall, although it's uh, not matching the rest, I don't think it looks too bad on the uh, overall picture of the, uh, the layout. Doing that. I've now moved on to the point motors, uh, which were fitted earlier, obviously. Um, and wiring those up as per usual with a solenoid type point motor there's three wires involved uh, for these i've used seat motors and i've got two power control wires which are blue and one common return which is the orange wire you can see in, in this as you can see i've linked all the orange wires for the appropriate areas up onto a strip of copper clad and then i've linked that through and linked it with the point motors in the second section and then from there they go into the wiring loom uh, with all the point control wires uh, which you can see here uh, i've tidied this up into a cable just on either side of the baseboard just to keep it neat and tidy and then it runs through the second segment uh, around the outside to clear the point motors that are in the middle and then runs right up the baseboard to the center where it will go out into the control panel as you can see there's a lot of wires hanging over the edge at the moment these are all going to get linked up into the plugs which will take it over into the control panel itself uh, to allow operation. Uh, control panel is a laser cut box which you can see at the back we'll come on to that one in a bit but yeah um, all the wiring limbs are now in place uh, you can see them going down the other half of the fiddle yard as well so that's a really good step as far as progress is concerned so all I need to do now is link all these up into a terminal strip um, which will then go onto a fly cable which will take the um, wires out into the control panel and then we should be in a position at which all the points are working too. So I've just added a couple of bits of copper clad that are cut into multiple sections just something to land the wiring on and act as a terminal block before the cables head out over the, on the fly leads to the control panel. What I'll do now is solder up the wiring looms which I've got running into this section here and here, wire those up onto those terminals ready to go and then we'll wire off that into ribbon cable out to the control panel. On the other baseboard i've already soldered the wires up so i've got the two halves of the loom excuse all the junk coming in um, and then each one wired up to a clearly marked terminal so i know what's going on and which point motor is which so i've now put together the uh, the two fly lids um one of these i've put the case on the other one i haven't yet just so you can see what's going on 
Uh, as you can see, I've got a ribbon cable that's uh, soldered to each of the individual pins. Uh, not using every pin, so I've got some spare. Uh, I've got some spare on the other one as well, uh, just in case I need to add anything in the future that I haven't thought of. Hopefully that won't be the case, but it's always a good idea just to have a bit of spare capacity just in case. So as you can see where the uh, the wiring looms come down to the tag strips, I've soldered on all the blue wires which are coming from the point motors, and they're now connected up on those solder tabs across onto the ribbon cable. Nice and neat, not the neatest ever, uh, but not bad. I've also got a plug with the orange and green wires coming off it just here. Uh, this one I will secure onto these blocks of wood just to give it something to mount on. Uh, that is the uh, power lead that will come into the layout carrying AC and DC. AC for powering the point motors and DC for powering the LEDs which will go in the control panel. You need two separate power feeds so I've just differentiated those. Those all carry straight from that plug across the tag strip into the main cable and then run out to control panel just to keep the number of cables running to the control panel to the minimum. So the only issue I've got is that I'm not entirely comfortable with the way this flexes. Um, I think we need something to secure that in place otherwise it's going to get a bit jaded over time. Uh, I don't want to rely on those small solder joints uh, holding all the time. So what I think I'm going to do is make a small bracket up just to hold all these wires flat to the baseboard as they come off the tag strip and then the fly lead can, can head off from there. So I think what we'll do is we'll put a, a small block of wood here, small block of wood here and we'll put a strip across the top which will have the effect of locking it down in place like that uh, and then it make it considerably stronger um, and hold those wires in place safely. Right, as you can see, I've now made that bracket that holds the ribbon cable down. Nice and neat little job there, just a piece of plywood uh, screwed through onto the baseboard with a, uh, a small spacer between it and the baseboard top to allow the wires to run through. I've also mounted the socket where the uh, power comes into the layout. And what I've done is, just for testing purposes, I've connected that into the uh, DCC bus as well, which allows me to plug in a temporary controller just onto the fiddle yard while I'm in the shed. At the end of the fiddle yard, I've done the last bit of wiring, which is the connection of uh, this socket. Uh, as you can see, I've just used a couple of bits of plywood uh, mounted on top of one another to mount the socket on. Uh, and I've linked through from the bit of tag strip that was on the baseboard uh, for the blue cables and the orange cable, which take the feed for the two points, which will be on one of the end corners. Uh, and I've run that just along the end of the baseboard and tucked that in nice and neatly. That also. This is also carrying the track feed onto the curve at this end. Uh, so I've doubled up, as I have for all the, the sockets, the feed wires. Uh, so there's two red and two black wires that head into that socket. Only reason for doing two is just to provide a bit of reassurance um, and to bulk up the cables slightly where they're crossing over the baseboard joint. Well, after what's felt like an eternity, soldering bits of wire together and making up fly leads that run from the fiddle yard itself out to the control panel, it's about time we actually had a look at the control panel itself to see what's going on. Now this is a laser cut uh, box I bought, uh, it's from a company called Flix Genix. Uh, unfortunately I bought uh, one with the plywood lid, uh, which I then found was not what I should have bought because I don't like the finish on it. Um, I also decided to paint it black and then try and draw the track plan on in white paint pen. Uh, that's it's fair to say being a complete disaster. I'm really not happy with how that was looking, so I gave up after a couple of lines. So what I'm going to do now is uh, approach the company and see if they're able to produce me a laser designed lid for this. Uh, it's only a minor job to change it over because it's a separate part to the rest of the box. It'll just be a case of popping the switches out and putting them into the new lid once that arrives. So I'm not too worried about that. Nice easy job. As it was the Christmas period while I was working on this, um, I knew it was going to take me a bit of time before I was able to get in touch with the uh, company um, and they'd be able to produce the new lid. So I thought it was worth cracking on in the meantime and getting things soldered up uh, so I could get testing underway. So I, that's why I fitted the switches into the box as it is. So this is a lid as it stands. So this lid is uh, going to go in the bin uh, or on the bonfire, whichever way around we decide to do it. And we'll take all the switches out, obviously, before we do that. So I think it's worth it if we take the lid off, let's have a look inside and see what we've got. Okay, so on the bottom of the lid for the control panel, um, I've put some strips of copper clad down uh, across the bottom here and here. And what I've done is uh, linked every switch, or I'm linking every switch off that with the orange wire, which is the, the colour I've been using for the common. Uh, so as you can see, I've numbered each switch on the background, just for, on the back, just for reference. Then we've got the orange wires all dropping down onto the copper clad board. 
pretty straightforward on this. I've just been wiring up from the common pin on the uh, each switch, which is so each of these switches is a uh, center off um, SPDT switch, uh, momentary contact one. So it springs back to the center when it's uh, when it's been fired, which is what you need to fire a solenoid point motor. Um, what that means is that the center pin on each one is the common, and then the uh, pin on either side is the uh, the two different directions so I'm obviously wiring the common orange wire onto the center pin. So that's all 25 of the point switches wired up, as we can see, uh, all coming off that bit of copper clad strip. I'm pretty happy with that. So the next job is going to be to run a blue wire off uh, the terminals on either side of all of these switches. That will run via the back here, um, and I'm going to run it as a direct wire from there, and it will run down onto the strip on the um, main part of the control panel where the wires are coming in from the sockets at the moment. While this might look like a bit of a creation, uh, it is all quite logical uh, and it's nowhere near as complicated as it looks. Uh, essentially you've got 25 points which all need to be switched, so you've got 50 blue wires that are controlling the points. These come in at the sockets which come from the fly leads which are here, here and here over on this side. One side links up to one baseboard, the other links up to the other baseboard. They run into a set of tag strips that run along the back here. Uh, you can just about see them through the wiring and then we have cables coming off those which I've linked up into cords uh, depending on which section of the frame they go to and they run up to some switches which sits on the lid actually we saw earlier from the opposite side um, so you've got two blue wires going to each switch I've numbered each point so I know which one's which and then also coming off the common point on each of those switches we've got an orange wire uh, just the same as we have on the layout that runs up to this strip of copper clad which I've mounted at the top here or the bottom as it is on once it's down and then that links back via this wire and that runs down if we follow it down to the capacitor discharge unit so we've got two outputs from the capacitor discharge unit here and here this one goes straight to the switches which is one side of the point circuit this one runs out onto this strip of copper cloud here and then is then linked through back onto the layout on the common terminal and it also runs to the opposite end of the control panel and goes through on the opposite socket as well not that you can see that now you're probably wondering what these big green circuit boards are in the middle now i decided at quite an early stage that i would want led point indication now when you try and put point indication and solenoids together there's a uh, inherent difficulty that a solenoid needs a short burst of high power whereas an led needs a constant burst of low power these circuit boards are made by a company called Micro Miniatures. Uh, I found them just through a Google search. Uh, there are other companies out there that do it. I've got no preference for one or the other. Um, I mainly chose these purely because they work in multiples of eight points per circuit board. I knew I had 24 points that I wanted indication on because I don't really need one for the loco siding itself. So 24 points could be controlled out of three, three boards, three circuit boards. So that seemed the logical way to go. So just looking at the circuit boards in a bit more detail, each one has an input for each side of each point. I've linked these through onto the copper clad. Um, so each one of these tag strip sections has three wires attached to it, one coming in from the socket, one going out to the switch, and one going out, which is then screwed into the terminal block here. Each of these boards also has a common input, which is the orange, which is coming from the point motor. And then we've obviously got some circuitry on the other side we have a DC input which eventually powers the LEDs um, and feeds the whole circuit board and then we also have a mirror strip of this um, green screw terminals which will then link out to the LEDs. I've not fitted those yet because I know I'm going to have to replace the top and I don't want to do that until I've got the final top in place just because the LEDs are smaller and there'll be a lot of wiring involved in that. As we saw previously on the other baseboard the plug on the underside of the fiddle yard uh, brings an AC and a DC 
feed onto the layout. You can see those here and here, green and orange. Green for the DC, orange for the AC. The AC goes straight into the capacitor discharge unit, which as we looked at before, then comes back out and runs to the commons on all the switches on the lid. And then the opposite side runs out and goes to the baseboards where it runs to the commons on all the point motors to complete the circuit. The greens are connected onto some extra bits of tank strip here and here. Uh, and then these follow around the inside of the control panel and run to each circuit board in turn. So there we have it, all the wiring is now done. Several hundred solder joints gone into it. Uh, several months work, realistically. Uh, but I think we're now at a point where everything has been tested, everything that seems to work. I had to correct a few silly little errors uh, that I'd made, just to uh, test myself, obviously. Uh, but we're now in a place where everything is working, um, all the wiring is done, and as such, I think it's about time we flip the layout over, look at the track again, and hopefully we can get a train running around the fuel yard simulate what we'll be doing at an exhibition. Okay, so we've got the baseboard turned up the right way now. Uh, got a loco out, got everything plugged in, uh, got the control panel plugged in. Excuse the drill on a piece of wood that's acting as counterbalance for it. Uh, unfortunately, I've been uh, suffering from COVID over the last uh, couple of weeks, so I've been unable to go out and buy a £1.50 flush mount set which is all I need to be able to mount the control panel on the side of the baseboard. So at the moment I've had to uh, perform massive bodgery and mount the control panel on a piece of wood with the drill acting as a counterbalance. Uh, but it does the job in that we can at least flip the switches and have everything plugged in. Uh, it just means I can't run right through on those front three roads. So without further ado, let's give it a go, get some trains running. Just while this class 20 is running onto the centre road, uh, it's worth saying these are all locos that I've just taken off the workbench. They're all in various stages of completion. None of them are finished. Most of them still need weathering or a bit of extra detailing work done. In the case of the class 47, it still needs some head code blinds adding. Uh, these are all on the to-do list. I just picked them all up at random to uh, test out the fill yard just because they were readily accessible.
there we have it, one complete fiddle yard, which will hopefully do many years service. I'm intending that this can be used behind multiple layouts in the future, so it should be around for a while yet to come. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching this video. We'll be producing more videos in the future that chart the construction of the rest of the layout, so please do subscribe to the channel, and hopefully we'll see you at a future video.